The decans of the zodiac are aspects of astrology for the advancing astrologer and tarot reader. In fact, those of you more familiar with the tarot know more about the decans than you may have initially assumed. If you're looking to improve your chart reading or tarot reading skills, then this is the series for you. Today we're continuing our discussion on Taurus and the Hierophant with the Six of Discs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Seth and I enjoy creating videos that help us in the astrology community stay well-rounded and always thinking critically. If you have no idea what the Deccans are, then this is not the place to find out. Somewhere on the screen, as well as down in the footnotes, you'll find a link to the preface of this series. Check that video out first, get your questions answered, then meet me right back here. All right, so in our last installment of this series, we introduced the Hierophant. We also discussed the last decan of Aries and the first decan of Taurus, the Four of Wands leading into the Five of Discs, respectively, revealing their special place as transition points from the Emperor to the Hierophant. To simplify things, this is a transition from the cards like the Emperor and the Hierophant are what Corrine Kenner, author of Tarot and Astrology, would consider a cosmic stereotype a broad encapsulation of what Aries and Taurus and the rest of the Zodiac are from the Tarot's point of view. Be sure to check it out. The Minor Arcana, the numbered cards of the Tarot, also covered in Kareen Kenner's book, give each cosmic stereotype some context and nuance. We look at the five, six, and seven of Dis to illustrate the journey of the Hierophant. For your client, there are helpful associations to be made between the decans, the planets, and the house cuffs that occupy them. With the six of discs, we're right in the middle of the Hierophant's journey. And this is the first layer of context that this card can provide. You'll be hearing me say context a lot throughout this series. Context is an addiction of mine, and I want to get you hooked too, because context is the key to unlock all insights and understanding in life, an absolute necessity. So, to give us some much needed context, Taurus season is from April 21st to May 21st. The second decan of Taurus is from 10 degrees to 19 degrees of the sign. So those of you born roughly between May 1st and May 10th will find your son in this Deccan. The start of the Hierophant's journey was a humble one, most often a struggle. With this new leg, we can imagine the Six of Discs as the solidification of Taurus's generous nature, as well as their consulting prowess. This generosity may not manifest with the sharing of their physical things, but with their time, attention, and thoughtful opinions. They may not be able to advise you on the best thing to do in a given situation, but you can count on them to know what they would do in just about any situation. So, for those of you just dipping your toe in and those of you looking for a new technique, there is a reliable way to get started with this approach to inductive astrology. It's the dualities, paying attention to whether an energy within the Deccan is extroverted or introverted. And this is the technique that actually helped me first grasp astrology. For this installment, the question we want to ask ourselves is what can be gleaned from finding either an extroverted or introverted planet within the second decan of Taurus? If I see an extroverted planet in this decan, like the Sun, Mars, Jupiter, or Mercury, then I'm paying close attention to the theme of premature execution. What I mean is that we're looking at someone who may say, if I see an introverted planet here, like Saturn, the Moon, Venus, or again Mercury, then I'm paying close attention to themes of misrepresentation and hoarding. Hoarding isn't meant to be taken literally or at face value. What I'm referring to is
Today we revisited the cosmic stereotype that is the Hierophant, before embarking on the second leg of its journey via the contextualization of the Six of Discs within this astrological theory. And then we ended with a closer look at the interpretations of possible introverted and extroverted energies within this Deccan. If you want access to this full video and full series, become a patron at patreon.com slash thecuspastro. Our next installment will be a review of the Seven of Discs, the conclusion of the Hierophant's journey. If you enjoyed this preview, then be sure to like this video, leave a comment below, and ring that notification bell so you can stay up to date on what we're releasing on this channel. Embrace the stars, but always think critically.